Kind of Funny Studios is brought to you by Deus Ex Mankind Divided, now available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. This new critically acclaimed entry into the Deus Ex universe once again has players taking on the role of Adam Jensen with an all-new arsenal of state-of-the-art weapons and augmentation. See what all the excitement is about at DeusExx.com. What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 82 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. This is a very special one. The first ever Games cast shot out of Kind of Funny Studios. Yay! It's a very exciting time for everybody. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by the coolest dudes in video games, Colin Moriarty mm. and Greg Miller. Hi. Thank you for having me today. This is going to be a good episode. Is it? One of them evergreen episodes. Whoa. Because we had to record this before the actual stream that's going to happen that people are probably watching, watching right, this now. right now. Mm. Or it happened in the past and they're watching this like they normally mm. do. Or that's listening to it. Or listening to it over on iTunes.com slash kind of funny, which works sometimes or doesn't work other times. Yeah, iTunes, iTunes is weird. To really I don't understand iTunes.com. Yeah. yeah, that, that doesn't. They're, they're it should take you to the nice kind of funny page. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's just Beautiful. like, do you want to download iTunes? It's like, bitch, I already have I already iTunes. Have but if you go to iTunes and search for kind of funny in the store, we have this nice layout. You can get this show, PS I Love You, Game Over Greggy Show. You can give them all five stars. That'd be dope. Yeah. You can leave some reviews. Right. That'd be cool too. Anyway, I want to give a shout out to Nick, Kevin, Matt Scarpino, all those people. Because look at these walls. Look at that wall these over there. These are the now the game. This is the Games Cast Castle. Look at Kev, look go at, ahead and pan in on the one of the walls. Look at the moving images over there. Kev can't pan from there. Just give yeah. the give just Kev, give, give the shot of me. Zoom. Just give the just give the shot of Colin and I, you'll see a wall back there. Go to camera one, Kevin. There it is. See, and there's a wall there it is. right there. There's the wall. You got the so, blue thing so back there. Walls. Obviously, we have the video wall. This being games. Oh, my God. <laughs> did you cut away at just the right time? Right, yeah. <laughs> so I'm really excited about this because when I heard we had a video wall, I was like, yeah. oh, man, what are we doing for Gamescast? So yeah. Gog, we knew we wanted to do the, the actual, um, the, the original set. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the little, picture frames. Yeah. Modernized. Just, just the to, stone walls. Tans. Exactly. But for this, I was like, I want to do something cool. There's this artist I've been following for a very, very, very long time named Orioto. He's awesome. Oreo? Ori Oto. Oh, o -R -I -O -T -O. I'm less excited. O-T-O. Link in the description to all of his work. Um, he's been doing stuff for years. And I've been following him on NeoGAF and DVNR and all these different places. But every week, he does a new video game painting like this. Uh -huh. And they're they're beautiful. I mean, like you'll, you'll see them throughout the show. Every minute, a new one comes up. And I'm going to try to update this as uh, the show goes on. But it, it, they're very cool. They're always stunning. Right. So I'm very excited to... Uh, now, don't punch Sonic, no, no, Colin. No, leave, leave Colin alone. alone. Uh, no, so definitely Sonic check him out and send him some love because he's uh, very graciously allowing us to use his artwork in this stuff. You can buy prints from his, too, over at uh, his page in the, the description. It's hard. Um, and and also... What's up? I was going to say, in a chorus, and this might be where you're going. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. This thank whole you the kind of funny studio is all because of you and your support, whether it be on Patreon, whether it be just watching the show, whether it be sharing with your friends. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Yeah. You can get the show early on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, or you can get it for free on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. You know, the rigmarole by now. And if not, you can ask one maximum Cortez about it, him and Graham. Graham of legend. Graham. Graham of legend on Twitter. Both of them making this beautiful Beautiful uh, the new intro the new intro that you saw earlier and bam right there Andy did all the art Graham did all the the motion graphics and stuff right. really impressive and also shout out to Zach for Zach to reflect designs for making the new logo for all mm. of the shows mm. so it's exciting time a lot of shout outs to get out of the way shout they're, out they're important important it shout is. outs um so how are you guys doing good I'm I'm good. great. Yeah. I'm excellent. You ready to talk about some video games? I'm ready to talk about some games. I'm, I'm ready to do some new this. studio stuff. You ready to talk about your, your favorite video games? I am. Greg? I am ready to talk about my favorite so, games. So about a week and a half ago, this little uh, thing called Twitter had Heard a trending it. hashtag Twitter. going on. Hashtag seven fave games. Everyone's writing their seven favorite games. Someone figured out 140 characters. You can probably name seven things. Yeah. Because now they're doing seven fave movies, seven fave foods, seven fave this, seven fave that. It's like, all right, guys, you can calm down. The game started it. Slow your as roll. As far as I know. Right. But I really like looking at people's lists. Right. Obviously, these things, they make us think. They make us look within ourselves. Because what your favorite whatever is says a lot about who you are. Now, we've obviously talked about our favorite games many times on these big About a year shows. ago, we did our top 10 favorite games. 
on the Kind of Funny Games cast episode, I don't know, 35? Available on youtube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Uh, what we did was we did our top five favorite games. So each one of us did a topic where we talked about it. But I thought it'd be cool to kind of, because I, as I did that, I didn't even think about what I said then, because things change. You know yeah. what I mean? It's an ever-flowing, how do you feel? I that? did the exact opposite. I went and watched that episode, mm. and then I went and amended my list. And I went back yeah. through the annals of time, yes. even to our IGN days, which seemed like so long ago. I went and looked at those lists. I put them, I tracked them with little strings and little pins in them, mm -hmm. see where everything was going made some changes, Colin, based on what I said the last time we did this. Right, I am enough. like a butter stick. A butter Constantly stick. moving, okay. evolving. <laughs> Things can change or happen a at a glance. Stick. Hey, honestly, though, like when you think about a caterpillar, and then you think about a butterfly, mm, yeah. that's one of those real unbelievable things as far yeah, as Yeah, oh my god, are you I'm kidding like, me? What? There's some magic going it's on It's also here. like when a girl has a ponytail and glasses, and then she takes off the glasses and let down the ponytail. It's like, oh my god, you're not a nerd at all. You've been hot this whole time. Oh, the entire time. Yeah. Yeah, thing she very, does is very magic. exciting. I did not look back at that topic at all. I, mean, I assume good. any of my choices are the same, but there's seven now, so we can change it. But I thought one morning I was like, I'm gonna tweet this out. I tweeted mine. I saw Colin tweeted his. You didn't. I don't like Twitter that much. I don't use it. Oh, that's true. That's true. But you should you should use it more. Um, you then made your list. So I did for this topic. Topic one. I want to talk about our hashtag seven fave games. Okay. I'm gonna go first. You guys can berate me all you want. We're not going to berate. No, and there's no wrong answers here, Tim. Yes, there Ex is. Now let's hear the Crash list. Hi, if Crash Bandicoot is in the top three. No, so that's that's why I think it's interesting here is, you know, when you when you you can kind of hear someone's list and you, you it makes them think a lot of things, right? Sure. I post this. A lot of people giving me feedback on the internet. Where's Crash? Where's this? Where's that? I like that. It makes me think, did I do did the I wrong fuck choice? Up? Did, did I, I fuck up? No, Crash does not deserve to be in my top seven favorite games. Yeah. I understand. I love Crash, but come on. Let's be... Honest with mm, ourselves. Right. That's not up there. Is it in the top 100? Yeah. Mm, oh, definitely. Okay. Top definitely. 100, yeah. Top 100. Mm, I'd put it in there. Of course you put it in there. Mm. Yeah. yeah, come on. Um, but the, this is not in order. These are just seven favorite games. Just put them in there. Yoshi's Island. There's been a lot of haters over here. Hashtag Colin. I mean, it's a hashtag, hashtag, hashtag Colin. Yes. <laughs> um, you've been hating on this stuff, but that game, it's fantastic. I think the from level design and aesthetic alone, it deserves to be in the upper echelon of Mario titles. And I know that it's not like it's called Mario World 2, and it, that kind of offends Deceived a lot all of, of us. It's, yeah. a, it's very deceiving. But when you take that away from just look at it as Yoshi's Island, it is amazing. It's by far the best Yoshi's game. I don't think they'll ever make it a, a better Yoshi game. Um, but it, it is, as far as I'm concerned, pretty much perfect when it comes to the balance of platforming and interesting gimmicks in the levels that are that are fun, uh, except for the, the Poochie thing. Poochie, the dog. From The Simpsons? No, no, no. Fuck you, Poochie. Fuck you, Poochie. You feeling correct. it? Uh, but the boss fights were amazing, and I think that that's something that Mario, at least back then, always kind of struggled with, was having fun, different, varied yeah, boss they were, fights. Yeah, they were all the same. Yeah, in Mario 1, it was just Bowser over and over, just different with different Oh, weapons Mario 2, although that's not Mario a real Mario 2 game. It did it, tried. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it had, a, it had four or five different ones that yeah. go through with variations. And then and Bowser. Mario 3, Mario World were just... Over and over and over again, the Koopa Kids. Or there was the mini bosses here and there. Mm. But this one, there was a, every world had a mini boss. Every world had a boss. Each one of them, totally different. And it was very, very fun. And I thought that the, the, there was a whimsical nature to it. And it, I think Yoshi's Island was um, the last 2D Mario title that really had its own look and feel to it. Yeah, it definitely did have its own look and feel. Yeah. And it's, it's awesome. It's beautiful. You know, even yeah, to this day, a, looking at the storybook uh, kind of feel was awesome. It's a pretty game. I, I My problem with it was that it wasn't, you know, it was, it was Super Mario World 2, but it wasn't. And I, that really annoyed the shit out of me, actually. You know, because I, I can imagine. Because I wanted more, you know, it's the same It's the same kind of bait and switch we have with Mario 2, although I really love actually happened, you know, Doki Doki Panic Mario 2. I really happen to enjoy that game a lot. So I wasn't that angry about it. But yeah, it was one of those things where it's, it, it, it it harkened back to that era, actually an earlier era, really the NES era, where sequels were often very different than the than, than the predecessor. So, um, but I know I'm in the minority on this. I know people that really, really actually adore that game. Um, and I went back and played it on a Game Boy Micro. Um, I don't know, six or seven years ago, mm -hmm. and I was like, it's it's fine. It's a fine game. I, that I version has some issues. They added the Yoshi sounds on a really, really, really bad <laughs> sound. Yeah, all that stuff because he didn't do that back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Um, they added that on the GBA, which has a really, really, really bad sound chip. So it was like really grating and baby Mario crying and stuff. That's not what you want to be hearing. Now. No, no. The, the the audio aside, I went back and I'm like, it's fine. It's it's not my cup of tea, but it's it's also, a, I think, a pretty late SNES. Oh, yeah. Game. 96, I think. Yeah. I think it came out in the same year as Mario 64. Yeah. So it's that's kind of cool when you think about it. Like the it, it's like the. Uh, 
it's like Yoshi's Cookie and all those games we bring up like that are just uh, or Wario's Woods and stuff like games mm-hmm. that are just like randomly late yeah, in the generation. Kirby's Adventure even. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 93 was Kirby's Adventure. So, uh, yeah, so I respect it. I know people like Mark Ryan Silly, who's the guy that hired me at IGN, and was like, oh, adores that game. So yeah. it's, I, I know that I'm kind of on a Yoshi's Island alone in this one. Oh, Damn, it was the first game I ever beat, so I, I gotta give it the shout out. It, it wasn't that good to deserve that long of a look. It wasn't that good. No, it wasn't good at all, actually. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get the, the obvious answers out in the in the beginning here. Pokemon Gold and Silver. Pokemon, obviously, one of the, my favorite games of all time, my favorite franchises of all time. And I think a lot of people would be surprised that it's not Red and Blue that are my favorite. Or Go. Or Go. No, no, no. It's Pokemon Gold and Silver because they really perfected everything that Red and Blue uh, put out there, it built on the foundation, it added the day-night cycle, which which kept things interesting, and back then was a new idea for video games, especially for a portable game. Yeah, for so, portable games, I mean, there were day-night cycles in games before that. But I mean, it, real time. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Cycles. Oh, no, no, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Um, gold and silver, well-remembered games, fun games. Um, I, I, I'm not surprised that red, blue, red and Blue. Red and Blue are like the prototypes. I mean, Green, obviously, is really like the, the original, but, but re- like... Re- I understand why Red and Blue wouldn't be your favorites. It, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean they're great. I mean they're amazing, and I, they're definitely rank high. But gold I, I think the Gold and Silver just they're superior in yeah, every way I in agree. terms of story. In terms of uh, the thing is, Gold and Silver was the last generation, as far as I'm concerned, to add um, Pokemon that felt like they they fit in, but they were different enough, and you know, kind of had a, an own their own unique feel where it wasn't just here's this more, here's just another bird, here's just another this, here's just another that. They kept. Keeping things interesting. So the first 251, I'm really a huge fan of. That's not to say I don't like the, the later games. The third generation, Ruby and Sapphire, I think, really did add a, a, a nice layer of um, difference in terms of locales you visited. It was a lot more water-based and a lot more, um, a lot more too surf- much water. surfing going on. There was too much water. That is a fact. 7.8. Um, but I, Gold and Silver, uh, it completed a legacy, too. I love that it was an, an actual sequel. It continued the story uh, of Red and Blue, and it was two years later, and, and you end up going to the same region. You just got so much bang for your buck, and that's why a lot of people in the comments were like, oh, what about Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver? I do go with that. I do go with the the remakes on the DS, because it just it makes it a little, a little bit faster, which is a big problem with the older Pokemon games. They're really slow mm. in terms of moving and in terms of the battle, battle system. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely a ding against it. But overall... Don't get much better than that. Um, Super Smash Bros. Wii U. That was a hard Ooh, one to choose. That's surprising. Um, last time I said Brawl yeah. for uh, my, my pick, which is also surprising. A lot of people are like, oh, Melee. And I get it. Melee is way better when it comes to the really particular fighting game, you know, Let's talk gurus about and all that right stuff. Right in between frame counts, right? Way, yeah, exactly. The wave dashing up. and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I totally get it. I love Melee. I love all the Smash games. But for me, Brawl was the one that me and my friends played the most. And I feel like the amount of characters it had. And it had a lot of good things. It did have tripping, though. And tripping People hate that. Bullshit. And they should, because it's total, stupid. Total bullshit. Really dumb. And it was a bad move. And you shouldn't put that in your game. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they, and it sucks, because they deliberately did that to downplay Melee's kind of, you know, frame by frame right. style. It's like, why would you why a weird would way to do it though? People, right. right? Yeah. Like at least give an option to turn it off. Or just don't have it. There's no reason to have it. Um too bad they couldn't patch it out. But Smash Bros. for Wii U, now they can patch whatever they mm-hmm. want, you know? And uh my the, my vote goes to it because it gave me a lot more of what I want from Smash Bros. I never thought I'd be playing eight player Smash. Like that's crazy. That sounds technically insane, but lo and behold, they made it happen and it's fun and it's it's crazy and hectic. In the same way four player Smash is. But you can still play your, the one on one matches. And for years, it was always all one on one Final Destination. This game allowed us to do Final Destination Omega stages for any of the stages. So mm-hmm. it wasn't the same song playing over and over and over. Now you get the different you know looks and feels for everything. And I love that. And also, the cast was insane. I think the total final uh, with uh, DLC characters was something like 56. Something like that. Shirtless That's Shulk too, yeah. Shirtless Shulk, you know, and I, I loved all the new characters. There was a couple things I didn't like. Zero Suit Samus doesn't play like she did in uh, Brawl, and she was one of my main characters, so I was upset about that. No Ice Climbers. Yeah, that was no a bummer, snake. man. They really copped out with the Ice Climbers. Yeah. But I, I, I'm I, holding out for the NX Definitive Edition. I feel like, uh, you know, I never, going to give it to you. I never played Smash Brothers at a high enough level to appreciate why everyone thought Melee was better than Brawl, because when Brawl came out, I was like, this is fantastic. This is actually like way better than Melee to me. I, I you know. That was always the thing. They know. always felt like they got better and better and better. Yeah, exactly. Like when I when I go back and look at um, Smash on 64, for instance, which I thought was fantastic. when I, like, I love that game when it came out. It's like this game kind of sucks. Like, like you know, like like I'm like because melee was so much better. And then when I look back at mm. melee when Brawl came out, I'm like, well, melee kind of like seems super dated now. And then and and I felt the same way when the Wii U version 
uh, of Smash came out because I was like, well, looking back, I, the one thing that I remember with with comparing Brawl to Wii U Smash is that the, it didn't seem like a quantum leap compared to like I thought sixty four to Melee was a huge leap. I mean, and, it and, was. I, and I and I thought that, Melee that to me is similar to red, Pokemon Red and Blue to Gold and Silver. Yeah. It really was just like, all right, but here's some real shit. So yeah, so yeah. so to me, it's like I felt like Melee was clearly better than sixty four, and I felt like Brawl was clearly better than Melee. Mm-hmm. But I don't play. These games at a high high enough level, but then when w- between Brawl and Wii U, I'm like the Wii U version's better, but I don't think it's like definitively and clearly better. Like I I I, I know people think it's crazy. Like I like that subspace emissary like single player shit. I thought it was cool. Like it was funny. It was cool. Idea. Um and and so I, I wish that they put a little more like try. I know that people like there was like a kind of a backlash against it, and yeah. and, and I was like, but wh- but why? Like I, I I thought it was fun and cute, and and gave me a reason to play like the game. Beyond just uh, trying to unlock trophies or, um, you know, uh, great. It, it is fun. Yeah, I like that as well. But like the grind of that can get a little old. And so I was like, I felt like I was kind of doing something um, more than just the, this back end grind in the game. Um, and I feel like it could benefit. I feel like it could benefit. I feel like, yeah, I feel like it could benefit from great. some more robustness. Yeah. On that front, but I thought that the the roster was great. I was disappointed that Mega Man played like shit. Um, he's like unplayable for me. Like, I, I, That's so funny. I can't use him. People like, love him. I just can't use so them. I need. Slow. I need a. Yeah. Like. I. I. Like. If I want. Sl- if I want something. Someone that's like kind of slow and plotting. Like I need power too. And so that's why I, I kind of went to day to day because. He's really not that, that slow. He's mid. Yeah, but he seems like I like either. If I'm gonna like play as someone fast, I want. I want. I want speed. If I want to play someone Sonic. like a little slower, no, not that fast, <laughs> not that fast. You gotta if I want to play, but I, I like to do, because I'm not very good at the game. I actually like to stand my ground and, and use a powerful character, or whatever. Ice climbers, I got really, really good with in the previous iterations, um, who were kind of unique and strange characters to play with, and I was, I really was disappointed that they didn't bring it back in. I think that they just have data somehow that shows that no one really gave a shit about them. Well, so. I think it was that. I think it was, and they would run on 3ds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the 3ds thing, and that, that which I, I think, also, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't believe that for a second, by the way. So, like, like that they couldn't get it. Why not? You can get all of this other shit running, but like two characters because they interact with each other, the 3DS's processor can't handle the ice climbers. I'm like, oh, I don't There's a couple things that, that, that sound weird to me about that just because Rosalina and Luma function mm-hmm. similarly, but the they were a bit more like two distinct characters. So I think that, uh, that I don't know. They, they said full it. Of shit. I have no reason to not believe them. Why wouldn't they put them in? Um, but Who I agree with cares? you. The single player sucked in uh, the Wii U version. Um, I was also a fan of Subspace Emissary, even though the gameplay wasn't that fun. Getting to the videos and stuff was super awesome. Yeah, I thought it was cute and like, like how they how they interact. interact. And I thought it was really well, like looked pretty too. Yeah, you know, even on the Wii. Uh, but anyway, I, I love the whole franchise. But I do think that uh, it, that one deserves a spot, if only because Melee will always be the king of the pro unit. And that there's nobody that will dispute that. However, Wii U brought it back in a crazy way where MLG has Smash Wii U. The Wii U scene is super like bustling and huge and everybody's like really into it. And I think that the fact that there is a new Smash Bros that is giving Melee a run for its money in 2016, like that's a really good thing. So shout out to you, Smash Bros Wii U. Next one, Amplitude. My God. I'm a platformer. The original, the original. The original one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, platformers and rhythm games are my favorite genres and amplitude just did it differently and mm-hmm. it, it really it, it gave me the sense of speed going through the rhythm games but also I felt like I was actually doing something sure. in DDR you're reacting to the music and you're just kind of hitting things at the but right amplitude, time you're making the song. amplitude you're making the song and that's something we see with guitar hero and all that and obviously and those, rock band unplugged yes um, obviously those are a bit more uh, practical in the sense that you are you're actually making the guitar sounds right with this, it's more about like the the DJ aspect. And I really like because when I listen, I'm a huge fan of music. So listening to music, I like breaking it down and thinking of each track separately. Like how does the the rhythm track differ from the melody, differ from sure. the drums, differ sure. from this or that? And playing through the songs, being able to go through on different tracks in different orders and stuff and making the song happen and then replaying the songs over and over uh, in, in a very arcadey style, going from easy to medium to hard to insane. It's very satisfying and it is one of those games where you just get lost in it and then all of a sudden you're just in the mode and similar to guitar hero where you almost feel like you're not even looking at the screen your right. fingers are just moving and somehow you just know what you're doing you're just in trance it becomes right? instinct yeah, yeah that's what the, well, that's when you know a rhythm game is really hitting its mark when yep. it's re- you're hitting your stride in it when it is that and then when the song does end and you look up and you still see the note highway right yeah. you look all over your room and, and it's still you just going see things moving it's like oh my like, this god this can't be good this couldn't be good for me but i love it and that, you know, honestly shout out to the the new one on ps4 like they did a really 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 great job with it and i love that game and yeah. i think that they they nailed it because they could have fucked it up you know they but they kept it the same and they kept the the gameplay right and 
and the it feels perfect. The problem is the soundtrack. It just doesn't right. have the, the license stuff. The license stuff. Um, and it doesn't have a lot of the, the classic original stuff that the other one did. So some of the songs in the new one are great, but none of them really match that, like, the, the special sure. sauce that the first one had. Um, and shout out to Frequency, too, but that one I did. In Rock Band Unplugged. Not as perfect. Um, Journey. Probably, to me, the best two-hour gaming experience I've ever had, mm, where mm. it's... You just you play it and you don't really know why you like it so much. You know, I think for me it's not that, that, that fun of a game. It's very pretty to look at, but it's like what what's the difference between me playing this or watching someone play it on YouTube? But there is a difference. You can, can you put your finger on it. Yeah. No, I think it's just I think that it's the matter like you making it all happen. Like it's the, you walking through and then triggering the the camera moves and all sure. that stuff. It's so cinematic. And I you think gliding down the hill and the camera tracking exactly, you. you exactly. Exactly. Like it's, the, it's very, very special. And obviously the end of it is like powerful, you know, um, I'm sure you guys will talk more about that. So I'll stop there. Tony Hawk's pro skater three out of all the Tony Hawk games. That one to me was the most important. A lot of people like two, but for me it added the revert, which really completed the functionality of the game. It allowed you to kind of keep the combos going uh, in a way that was was fair and still fun. Um, four added the spine transfer, which was great. And four is an amazing game. Thug getting off the board and all that. They started getting to the point where they were just adding things because they needed to add gameplay elements. And it was too much. No, nope. um, it was not too much. It was perfect. Thug was awesome. Thug was awesome. Yeah. But from a gameplay uh, perspective, it wasn't. Like getting off the board was really, really clunky. It felt like a bad. But back then, it's all we knew. It was so good. It was so fun. No, but, but we knew the other stuff. We knew no, we Tony Hawk 3 and we 4. We knew you didn't those. have to get off the board. No, yeah. No, and no, it, that, that was, was, like, was arcade bullshit. This stuff. was real. This was real life, man. We were out in the streets together. Fucking with Eric Sparrow? Yeah. Fuck that guy. Fucking oh. ass bitch. Um, but no, nah, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, uh, to me, it was going to hold a very special place forever in my heart because it brought back um, Roswell and Warehouse from 1, mm -hmm. which were like some of my favorite levels. And it really, it was next gen back then. And the soundtrack was amazing. Everything about it, the entire package was just so perfect to me. And I, I 100% of that game. Um, I did for most of the, the entries in that franchise. And but Thug. You did Thug? You 100% Thug? Of course I did. Yeah, and Thug too. Fun. And American there we, there we go. I didn't Ooh. stop. <laughs> but, uh, but Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 to me is kind of the pinnacle of that. Um, finally, Super Mario World. Probably the hardest choice for me because, you know, when you make these lists, you, you put these own rules on yourself. Yeah, of course. And I, a rule that a lot of people have, including me, was try not to over-represent a franchise, which is really hard when it's, you start talking about Mario. Because mm -hmm. I'd put Mario 3, I'd put Mario World, Mario 64, Mario Galaxy 2, Mario Galaxy 1. All of those definitely deserve a spot. Mario 2, I'd put up there. Um, but if I had to choose one, it would be Mario World. Okay. Why? Yeah. That is... The game that I wish I could forget and experience mm, and again replay. more yeah, than totally. anything else because it's just I feel everything positive I had to say about Yoshi's Island or um, a lot of these other games, it just perfectly nailed something that we knew before. It was a, a perfect iteration. Mario Three is amazing, but Mario World to me was just like all right, secrets. You now you understand the rules of Mario platforming, but now try to break it. You know, but you're not going to break it because we meant you to break it that yeah, way. Yeah, we you're knew you'd get up here. Exactly. We knew you'd fly up here. We, that's why there's this cloud. The keyholes thing. and all yeah. that stuff yeah. was just like, I, to me, I think that it really pushes the next level. And Yoshi. Yoshi was awesome. The cape broke the game, but it was fucking fun. Yeah. Who cares? Exactly. 